Today, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable chocolate Easter bunny table runner. But you better hurry before it's gone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Di with Sister Chicks Quilting, and welcome to my channel. You know, a couple of years ago, I made this pillow for an Easter project, and I thought the chocolate bunny was so cute on there. Every time I get it out, my daughter says, you really need to take a bite out of the ear of the chocolate Easter bunny. That led to this creation. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about applique. I'm going to teach you how to make a bias border. What do you think of the border I have on this? So cute and Easter-y and fun. And I'm going to teach you how to make this today. Why don't you join me? We'll have a good time. Now there's a pattern available with the complete instructions, but I'll also show you how to do it because I have a few little tips and tricks on making this all work. I'm not going to be using the green fabric because I'm out of it. So I found this purple fabric. So I am just going to measure it up, maybe a little long, cut it off. Oh my gosh, I hope I can do an April story. She's ambidextrous with her cut, have you noticed? Ta-da, I did it. I'll have to go into some training if I want to get any better. On the first one I made, I cut it right in half at the fold line. And I found out that I could have used a little bit more, a little bit more of the length. I mean, a little bit more of the width. So what I'm going to do is line it up fold to fold. I'm going to trim it. I am just going to double it up, fold it over on itself and take an extra, oh, inch and a half from the fold line. You can really use that in... Oh, I know why that didn't cut. This is my blade that has a nick in it. This works best when you use a binding that is the same as the background. So I'm going to set this piece aside. There's plenty of it and that's going to be my binding. I need some chocolate bunnies on this. This is how you cut the chocolate bunnies. The first thing you do is cut out my template. And you can make yourself a couple of templates. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I have got four of the five bunnies traced. Here's a tip. Don't flip your bunny to fit better on the fabric. So you want your bunnies going all the same way. See this? See this? All of the bunnies are gonna face up. So this bunny has to go like this. This is the last bunny, and he's the bunny that has the bite taken out of his ear. I am going to cut out this bite. Now, I have used some Steema Seam, or you know what? I actually have used Wonder Under. This was off of my Wonder Under bolt. I'm using, the color is chocolate Kona. So this is a Kona cotton. What more could you want? if you're making a chocolate bunny. So we're gonna put this bunny down in this direction and trace him around with this template. It's not hard to trace using these templates. Make sure you put your fingers out to the end. There we have it. I messed up that piece of film but I have just cut my bunnies out and I think they're cute just this way. I do want to say I am going to be raw edge appliqueing these bunnies on. There were five of them. I wasn't in the mood to turn them the way I do with interfacing on the back. The next step is to mark your fabric so you know where your bunnies go. Let me show you how I do that. You want to find the center of your piece. And take a look at all the folds that I have on this. It's kind of a pain, isn't it? Look what I have. Check this out. This is my new Laura Star. This is double heated steam. They take the moisture out of it. It's so 
amazing. Did you see that big wrinkle? Look at this one. See the wrinkle where it's been folded on the angle? Isn't that cool? That seam I just pressed out was the fold seam. Oh, did it go through to both sides? It did. I'm so in love with this iron. It's changed the way I quilt, but I digressed. I'll tell you about it in a second. What you wanna do is you wanna fold your fabric like this in half because what we're gonna do is find the center. Press this, put a nice crease on it, fold it in half again. Find the other side, and that will give us the center. That way, we're going to know where to put our bunnies. I'm gonna write on it with a heat disappearing pen. Here's a stack of fat quarter bundles. I am just going to lay them on top of themselves. You know how long you've had fat quarter bundles. You know about the creases in them. I'm gonna put four in a stack like this, and there's the original seams in it. Here is four fat quarters. Never been ironed before. Look at this, it's going through these like a hot knife going through butter. And those steams are out. Those seams are out and look at the other side. Your regular iron would not do that, would it? I am so excited that I have been chosen to be an ambassador for Laura Star through Everything Long Arm. You are not gonna find a lower price for a Laura Star iron except from my site that I'm gonna have linked below that'll take you right to everything long arm to get one. Let me show you this incredible steam iron. I have to tell you, I took the steam out of my regular irons because I was sewing with so many pre-cuts and every time I had steam in them, I shrunk the pre-cuts. I did, you guys all do, I know it. This is double heated steam and it's a dry steam. It's incredible. It does not shrink your fabric. Now let's get these bunnies ironed on before I eat them all. I have the lines pressed and I have them outlined. So that's my center. I think I'm gonna space these bunnies a little closer than I did on my other table runner. But first, I'm gonna find out, so I've got my lines right here. First, I'm gonna find out how tall my bunny is and he's a little over 10 inches. So I wanna put the five inch line right in the center, like so. I wanna make sure that he's straight. I'm just gonna eyeball where I want him to go. Do you know this trick? It's a good one. Instead of picking at the edges, if you take a pin and score it, actually rip the paper, then you can fold it and look at this, pull this right off. Now I'm gonna continue to make sure this bunny is where I want him. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. We don't iron in our house anymore. We Laura Star, by the way. A little shot of steam and that bunny is down for good. Then I'm gonna pull the other half of him off. Do you ever have problems with your appliques coming up? This one is going nowhere. He is down for good. Now what I wanna do is do my second bunny. And again, I'm just eyeballing these rabbits. I think they look darling on this purple. What do you think? I'm gonna go from the bum to the belly. I'm gonna go, I think three inches on this one, from the bum to the belly. And from the tip of the ear to that, one, two, three, four, five and a half inches. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five and a half inches. That's about right and then three inches from the bum to the belly. Oh, he needs to get his belly out of the way. Make sure they're straight. Score the wonder under, pull it off, making sure it's straight because once I iron this down, it is down for good. Not ironing them, I'm Laura starring them. Look at this, I'm putting hot steam on. Yeah, it's a little warm, 
Amazing. And Laura starred those bunny's ears down. And they're they're down so tight. Come on, I know your iron never ironed appliques like that because mine never did. I was always going over them. This is incredibly easy. It's made such a difference in my quilting already. Okay, here we go. I've got two more bunnies to iron on. And there were five bunnies in a row. Aren't they adorable? Thanks for listening to me tell about this incredible iron. I am so in love. I've had it for a week now and already it's making such an incredible difference in my quilting. I can't believe it. Like I say, I'm able to press pre-cuts, two and a half inch squares, jelly roll strips with zero shrinkage. It's incredible. The next step is to stitch your appliques down. I find this very satisfying. I run my machine at a slower speed and I carefully stitch around each bunny. Let's get appliqueing. Now that my machine is loaded with milk chocolate thread and I've got some milk chocolate bunnies under the needle, I'm ready to go. My bunnies are all stitched down. You just have to take a little extra time around the bite mark. I am ready to put this really colorful springy border on. This is how I do it. Have you ever seen these tools? They're bias tape makers. Now you can use a bias tape maker or you can just cut your fabric and Fold it. I'm going to cut several of them because I'm going to have to piece them together to make sure they're long enough to go the length of the runner. I have five pieces of fabric. You can really do whatever you want here. So you can see the colors and the fabric that I use. I just went through my stash, but in the pattern I give the exact amount of fabric that you need. And I made the yellow one a little bit wider. I think on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and make the yellow one a little bit wider as well. Because I'm using five colors, there's one side that doesn't have any on it. For instance, purple is not here. Purple is here, here, and on the end here. And blue is not on the bottom. Let me show you how to make this binding. I'm sorry, how to make this bias tape. The first thing you wanna do, you sew two pieces together like you were making a binding. So I'm gonna cut that off, snip the corners. I'm gonna press this seam flat with my Laura Star. So here's the little device. See the hole in the back that kind of goes around like, like a U around the top? If you haven't used one of you, just stick your fabric down like so. And you just keep feeding it through. Now this one has a little slit on the back. Can you see the blue fabric that's coming through? I take a pin and pull it down. I put my iron right next to where it comes out. And I just go along shooting little bits of steam. Before I know it, I have a piece of bias tape. The funny thing is, is I never bought any of these bias tape makers. I inherited them. Look how nice that is, except down here where I started it and it was all ski wampus. That was me not knowing how to use this. So I'm gonna start again and just continue. When you come to the part that's got a seam in it, you just kind of want to make sure I put my finger down and make sure 
I have that where it needs to be. And it's going through, and I'm continuing making my bias tape. Pretty slick, don't you think? Isn't that cool? And because I did it on the Laura Star with the table that's sucking the air through and cooling it, I can pick it up and it's nice and cool. It's not hot at all. I make a bunch of this tape. I will make three for each side of the blue. I will make four of each of the yellow because I'm going to have yellow on every side. Three of the pink, three of the purple, and three of the green. And I will meet you back at the sewing machine and I'll show you how to put this on and get that really neat little woven corner like I have on mine. All right, this is the technical way that I do this. We're going to be quilting on the fly here, which is kind of fun. I want to have, as you can see, there's more, there's more end piece. I could have spread the bunnies out more and taken up some of this end, but I didn't. So I'm going to have a little bit of uh, background space. What's it called? Negative. But I cut this piece wider. You know, the fold was right about here because I wanted some extra space. Now, if I'm going to measure below the bunny, find out there's six inches below and, oh, how about that? About six and a half inches above. So I've got some good space in which to put on my borders. I'm going to start with, let's see, and this is the whole science to this. I'm going to start with a green strip, but I want a green strip. Those are short ones. This must be a long one. Yes, here's a long one. I'm going to start with a green strip that will go all the way across, and that will be my first one. So I'm going to give as much negative or background space as I can, and I'm going to start on this end, pulling it over to here, and I'm going to have one, two, three more on here. So I think I'll bring it up just a little, like so. I'm going to use my tape, and I'm also going to use a heat disappearing pin. This is how I do it. We know this is a straight line right here, the edge of the fabric. I'm going to take the tape measure, go right to the bottom, and put the tape on, and that is four and seven eighths. So I am just going to give it a mark at four four and seven eighths. And I'm going to come over here and go four and seven eighths. I'll put one over here as well. No, I won't because I'm going to leave, leave these hanging and not sew them on. But just slide this piece down, marking the same mark. Then I want a straight line. That's where the big ruler's coming in. And we're going to line these marks up that I've made and draw a line. I want to extend this line past the bunny a little bit because I am going to take this bias border. There's my four and seven eighths, and I'm going to come down here and mark four and seven eighths. I'm going to mark a second line as well. I'm going to set it next to this green, just like so. This is my plan, Sam. And I'm going to use a, a yellow one. And it doesn't matter. The difference in spacing between the bias borders, it doesn't matter. It can be skinny. It can be tall. But I'm just going to put it in there. So that's my second one. And then the last one, I think, shall be a blue. There, what do you think of that? Ooh, that doesn't give me much right here, does it? You know what I'm going to do? I am going to use that line that I drew and bring the green on top of it instead of on the bottom of it. Move this one up, move this one up, and move this one up. And that gives me, it looks like, an inch and a quarter almost an inch and a half of fabric. Now, I like that. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to remove these two bias borders. What do you guys think of my buzzword, bias border? 
pretty genius, right? Just creating on the go, people. That's what I do best. All right, then I want to put this pink guy on. Where'd my, my tape measure go? Oh, it's on the floor. I'm gonna do the tape measure just like I did on the green one, only guess what? That is coming in at three and seven eight. So I'm gonna come over here to three and seven eight. And you know, it works better when you're not standing on your tape. And I'm gonna treat it like I treated the last bias border placement. I'll bring in the big ruler and I'm gonna line these up. So you guys know what's going on? Can you guys hear noises in my video? I'm filming here because my daughter's in the long arm room and the engineer is getting ready. Are you going to pick up Hazel from school? Yeah, I got a thumbs up. Everybody's trying to be quiet. It's kind of nice and cute. This is as close as I'll get to having a pet in my video. April has Oliver. I have the engineer and my daughter. Now remember, the green was going to go on top of this line. So I'm going to lay this to the end of the fabric. I am not going to pin this, but I am going to just start sewing. And I don't know if you can see or not, but I am using my presser foot as a guide. I'm also upping the length of my stitch because I like a really nice top stitch. Here I go. If you just tuned in and you're wondering why I'm not sewing it all the way, remember on these corners, I'm going to weave them together. Do you like the looks of the woven together? I sure do. also want you to know that my bias tape isn't is all different sizes it's not a hundred percent perfect coming out of those bias tape makers the bias tape kind of wiggles and moves around so I believe the blue that I'm using is a little bit thinner I definitely know the yellow is going to be thicker I think the yellow is really cute being super thick it gives a little bit of scrappiness to this project and I think it looks real nice. And I will stop here where the other one is stopped. Now I'm going to go through and sew the other sides down. After I get all of these put on, I will show you how I weave in a corner. After we weave four corners in, we're done and it's ready to quilt. On the row on the sides, I sew my four bias borders completely down all the way. And then I start weaving them in. I have lines that I can follow, so I keep them straight. I'll lay this one across like so. This first one goes under. See, the green goes under the purple. So I'm gonna put this on top of the purple, but it has to go under the yellow. So I am going to pick out the stitching and you know, I tried so many ways to do this that this just seemed the most logical and the easiest way for me. I don't mind picking out a small little seam that's an inch long. The results are really nice, but I just wanted you to see me do this. Here's a trick that I figured out. Do you see the tool I'm using, my little seam ripper? I'm gonna go over the purple, but I wanna go under this, and it's gonna be hard to get it under unless you go fishing like this. I stick this under, put it on top of this, and I pull it through just like you would using a bodkin. There you have it. It's under the yellow, and I have to put it also 
under the pink. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but on my pink strip here, it's more narrow than this pink strip. So what I've done is made my bias borders different width. So I lay it right next to where I want it to go under and I stick my seam ripper underneath. Then I stick it down on the piece and pull it right through. It is slick as a Dixie whistle, I tell you. All right, then I'm gonna go on and weave my yellow one through and it's really going to be a cute corner. So this one has to go under the purple. These colors are so springy and Eastery to me. Here comes my yellow one under the purple and I pull it through and there you have it. There we go. So then I'll go under the green on top of the pink and I will be almost done weaving my corner in. And then I'm gonna show you how I go in and stitch everything down so I don't have anything left hanging. Now, this is how I sew these down. They're pinned in place right here, as you can see. I will start with the blue one on the outside, sew it down to here, stop at this one that it goes under, back tack, then do this little piece, then all the way off, and that, that one is done. Did you see that? I totally messed up. I went to back tack it, and I'm just gonna unpick it later. I went to back tack it, and my foot pedal was crooked, and I sewed. So I actually back tacked this, and then shot off. I make mistakes just like you do. At least I hope you guys make silly mistakes like that. <laughs> okay, my foot is definitely on my presser foot here this time. Now to do the other side. I don't know if you can see or not, but look at the blue border. It's already tacked down. I'm gonna do the same with all of the ones going this way, and then I turn around and I get this side and do the same with that one. Okay, here we go, Mr. Yellow. Anyway, I think you get the idea. How do you think it's looking? I think it's just adorable. I really love the purple. And the other thing I love is the bite out of the ear right here. I'm going to make the binding for this table topper. And I want to show you how slick the Laura Star is in making binding. So let me clip my edges, I mean my corners. As you can see, I've done two and a half inches, just like I do for a quilt, and sewn them like this on the corner. Then I clip off the edges, or the, I clip the corners off, excuse me, and then press. Are you guys ready for this? I feel like the Taylor Swift song. Are you ready for this? You gotta be ready for this because it is so awesome. Oh snap, look how, look how flat it is. Dude, <laughs> with one pass. If you would like a Laura Star, I'm going to have a link at the bottom of my video. You can check out all of the pricing all of the specials and get yourself a Laura Star. It will be shipped right to your house. Now, until Easter, I'm including a three pack of filters. Basically, if you're a heavy quilter, a three pack of filters is going to last you all year long. I am ready to put the binding on this and what do you guys think of the backing? Isn't that adorable? I thought it was so cute and thought what a stinking cute background. So I bought it to put it on the background because it was on sale. <laughs>
that cute little bite out of the ear, the woven corners. What a fun Easter project this has been. And it's fast and easy. You have plenty of time to get it done before Easter. So I hope you want to get in and make it right up. Now you might hear your name called out because I'm going to give some shout outs to some viewers. I would like to thank Colleen from Edgewater, Florida for buying me a cup of tea. And also someone bought me some tea as well. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Also, if you watch my channel, you know how much I appreciate and like your comments and hearing where you're from. It just makes my day and I answer every one of them, sometimes a few days late, but I get to you. So thank you. And how many of you saw my live that I did two weeks ago? It was really a lot of fun. I've gotten quite a bit of feedback from everyone and I'm going to continue to do live. So thank you for watching them. However, I'm going to schedule it so you can join me. One thing that came from the live is I committed to doing a virtual quilt retreat. Look for a virtual retreat sometime this fall. I'll be working on it. Now to the comments. Manwata Shannon, I hope I pronounced your name right. You were able to buy a digital copy of the book with the no waste windmill block in it. You know, that was the very first quilting book I ever bought and I love it to this day. It was worth it just for that pattern. I hope you enjoy the book. Then Kathleen Lewis, I'm so excited you're making a double Irish chain. They really are that simple. Just watch the video a couple of times and you've got it. You don't even need a pattern. I'm doing a little something different today. I'm gonna to give a shout out to all of the people in Australia. So here goes, and I'm gonna read your names if you don't mind. Shell, you sign your name with a flower. Hello, Anita South Hall Harris. How are you today? Helen Morgan, Gail Reynolds. Hi Sue Matcham and Peterson2463. Thanks for saying hi. Hello to Lisa Karaku and Zoe in Tasmania. Then thanks for saying hi from Australia, Kay Tibbs and Lynn Duffy. I appreciate all of you, no matter where you watch from. I just wanted to send a special shout out to everybody down under today. I like to keep you informed about what's going on in my quilting studio. And I bet you all remember this quilt. I'm just gonna hold it up really high. I made it with scrappy, mini charms or two and a half inch squares. And my Aunt Connie, who is in a rehab center, requested this quilt before she went in. So we quilted it today. I'm going to take it to her on Sunday and I will post pictures of it finished with the binding and everything on my community page. But first, guess what she wanted on the backing? She likes the soft and snuggly. Check it out. Cuddle. The pattern is called Snail's Trail. It's one we've done quite a bit lately in our shop. I think the pattern turned out so well. You know, originally I was not going to put Cuddle on the back of this quilt, but if the recipient requests it, I'm going to give it to him. I want to say thank you for watching my channel. Thanks for having fun with me. I really had fun with this table runner. And you know what? I don't think I showed you the quilting on it. Can you see it? I have cross hatching around the bunnies and in the bunnies I have little tiny squiggles. Thank you for tuning in. If you like my channel, I would love for you to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and make some comments, one or the other or all three. But I really appreciate it no matter what you do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.